Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the altitude on hypotenuse theorems. And the altitude on hypotenuse theorems are based in the fact that we have three sets of similar triangles. So first, these begin with a large right triangle. So we have right triangle ACB with angle C being a right angle. And we draw an altitude, CD, to the hypotenuse. Thus, we have an altitude, CD, onto a hypotenuse, AB. And this, in turn, creates three sets of similar triangles. We have a triangle here on the left-hand side, the green triangle, and a triangle on the right-hand side, a blue triangle, and we'll see that the big triangle, ABC, is similar to the green triangle, ACD, which is similar to the blue triangle, CBD. And of course, you only have to have angle-angle to prove triangles similar, so all three of these have a right angle, and so the triangle on the left, the green one, and the large one both share angle A, and the triangle on the right and the big one both share angle B, and then the right angle, so they're similar by angle angle, and of course by the transitive property, then the green one must be similar to the blue one, so we have the three sets of similar triangles. Well, let's take a closer look at our sets of similar triangles. Let's take a look at the, the large triangle, ABC is similar to triangle ACD. So the one, the green one here on the left hand side. And we know if we have similar triangles that the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So I've got my similar triangles here, and then I've written out my proportion that AB is to AC as AC is to AD. And that matches up with my correspondence here in my similar triangles. Well, using the means and extremes product theorem, then I know that AC squared is equal to AD times AB. So AC squared, this leg of the largest triangle, of uh, triangle ABC, is equal to AD times AB. And what I'll say here, this is, if you will, this is the leg squared equals, and I'm going to call this the nearest side. So the nearest side, meaning AD is close to AC. So AD, whereas DB would be kind of the far side. That's kind of far away. Because this altitude is kind of splitting this hypotenuse. So DB is far away. AD is the near side. That's the near side. And AB, of course, I would consider that the entire hypotenuse. So the leg squared, AC squared, equals its near side times AB, the entire hypotenuse. And that's going to be helpful. So that's one of the altitude on hypotenuse theorems. Let's now take a look at the big triangle, okay, the entire, and the similar triangle on the right-hand side. Now here, using our correspondence, we see AB is to CB as CB is to BD. I've got my correct correspondence here. So using my means and extremes product theorem, I get CB squared, CB times CB, equals DB, or BD, times BA or AB. And 
this CB is a leg of my largest right triangle. And again, if you look at this altitude splitting the hypotenuse, now since I'm working with this leg over here, CB, now DB is the near side, and of course AB is the entire hypotenuse, where AD, I would call that the far side. It's farther away from that leg, whereas DB is near that leg. And sure enough, we have leg squared equals the nearest side times the entire hypotenuse. Okay, the leg squared equals its nearest side, DB, times the entire thing. Well, well, that's the exact same thing we just did here on the previous one. So, the altitude on hypotenuse theorems, while maybe different numbers and different sides, is pretty much the same concept. Okay, the leg squared equals its nearest side times the entire hypotenuse. And that will remain the same even if you rotate or shift your your large right triangle around. You'll still be able to use that leg squared equals near side times the entire hypotenuse. And finally, we have the two triangles, the left side triangle and the right side triangle. So triangle ACD. Our left side and our right side, those are similar. So we have AD is to CD as CD is to BD. So using the means and extremes product theorem again, we have CD squared equals AD times BD. And if we look at that, that is our altitude, CD is our altitude of our big triangle, the altitude squared equals essentially the product of the two sides it splits. Okay, so it's just equal to AD times BD, probably a better way to say that would be it's equal to Essentially, the left side of the altitude times the right side of the altitude, or at least the right side of the hypotenuse, the side that the altitude splits. So maybe that's the left side of the hypotenuse and the right side of the hypotenuse. I think that one's the easy one to memorize. Okay. So let's take a look at this. We'll do a little bit of a summary here with just one right triangle. So we'll create our single right triangle, our big right triangle. There's our right angle. So here we've got our hypotenuse. And I'll draw an altitude towards that hypotenuse. And instead of labeling all the sides, I'm just going to, or labeling all the vertices, I'm just going to label the sides. So I might call that side X and that side Y. We can call the entire hypotenuse that C. And we might call that P and Q. And I'll call the altitude here H. So using my altitude on hypotenuse theorems, just in summary, um, I have x, so x squared equals its nearest side, p, times the entire hypotenuse, c. We could also write this as x squared equals p times p plus q its nearest side times the entire base. Well, that also means that y squared, the other side, the other leg squared, equals its nearest side, q, times 
times the entire hypotenuse C, or that could also be Y squared equals its near side Q times Q plus P, the entire hypotenuse. And then finally, our altitude, I think this is the easiest one to memorize, the altitude squared, H squared, is equal to the product of the two sides that it splits. It's equal to P times Q. So there are your three altitude on hypotenuse theorems. And we'll practice some examples of these. Let's take a look at a sample problem here and apply our altitude on hypotenuse theorems to solve for sides x, y, and z. So we do have our, our right triangle, and we have an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. So we can use our altitude on hypotenuse theorems. Let's go ahead and just work from left to right. We need to solve for x, y, and z. So x, that's the leg of one of the, you know, of the large right triangle. And we know that x squared, or the leg squared, equals its nearest side, and 3 is the nearer side. So it equals 3 times the entire base, which is made up of the 3 plus the 9. So x squared equals 3 times 12. I'm going to multiply my 3 times 12, and I get x squared equals 36. I square root both sides. Every time I square root both sides, I get plus or minus 6. But I'm working with the side of a triangle, so it doesn't make sense to have a negative 6. So I'm going to discount the negative, and I realize that that particular side, x, is 6. Moving on to y. y is my altitude, and this is, I think, is the easier of the altitude on hypotenuse theorems. The altitude squared equals the product of the two sides that it splits, 3 times 9. And I could multiply that together and make that uh, 27. But I see here that 9 is a perfect square. So I know that y squared, if I square root both sides, that's the same as the square root of 9 times 3. Or if you will, the square root of y squared equals the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Better put my plus or minus in there. So then I get y equals plus or minus 3 square root of 3. I'm not going to have a negative side, so my altitude is 3 times the square root of 3. And finally, I can calculate z. Well, that is the other leg on the right-hand side. So z squared equals its nearest side. Now 9 is the nearer side. 3 is pretty far away over here. So I say my leg squared, z squared, equals its nearest side times the entire base, the 3 plus 9. I'm just going to make that 12 now. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify and solve for z. Well, here again, I have another perfect square. 9 is a perfect square, and I might see in here that 4 is a perfect square factor. So instead of multiplying 9 times 12 together, I'm going to square root both sides and say that's the square root of 9 times the square root of 12. My plus or minus in there. Square root of z squared is z. The square root of 9 is 3. And then the square root of 12. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate my negative here because I'm not going to have a negative side. So I have 3. But the square root of 12 still has a perfect factor in it. So the square root of 12, well, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So that's 3 times 
2 square root of 3. And then 3 times 2 is 6, so z equals 6 times the square root of 3. So now I've used all three altitude on hypotenuse theorems to solve for the three sides that were asked for. And we'll get some more practice with this and try some different options on this on some of the problems when I see you in class.